All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor to to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Karkadash. Shalom to the uh, elders for preaching the word truth and sincerely. In the names of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Karkadash. And I say Shalom to the elders out there. Shalom to the uh, Akiyam, scattered through four points of the globe, preaching the word truth and sincerely. In the names of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Karkadash. And I say Shalom to the elders, Wa Akiyam, Wa Akwa. And I say Shalom. And the uh, Heavenly Father's true name is uh, Yahweh of Israel. And it's only begotten son, which is Yahabashah, uh, Ahashem, in the name of Mashiach, Yahabashah. Those are their true names in the ancient paleo Hebrew, the Lashem, the Kadash, the Holy Temple. And once again, the water Yahabashah, Yahabashah, for giving us the opportunity and the chance to come out here to do so out here on the highways and hedges on this uh, October the uh, 16th, 2023. At uh, 1 50 p.m., so the Wadi Yahweh Hashem El Shaf has given us an opportunity and chance to come out here to peace. I mean, come out here to do so and to continue to profess and proclaim the names of the Heavenly Father Yahweh of Israel and Baha Shem and the name of Mashiach Yahweh Shaf. Those are their true names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, uh, the Lashwan Kadash, the Holy Tongue. So the Wadi Yahweh Hashem El Shaf has given us an opportunity and chance for us to come out here to do so. And this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 16. And he calls the all both small and great, rich or poor, free of bond, to receive a M A R K in their R I D A C H A N D or in their F O R E H E A D S. Right? So, this is a uh, prophecy that's about to be fulfilled. You know, this uh, technology in order to buy or sell this central digital bank currency. You know, because very soon it's going to be a time where, in order for you to function in, in this society, you got to have the technology that they want you to store in your body in order to buy or sell. And this is a major prophecy that's about to be fulfilled. That's why we are here on the highways and hedges, prophesying of these important things, of these soon to come prophecies that's about to come to pass, you know. So these are uh, important prophecies, you know, that's about to come uh, very soon. And we see an increase in signs of that, you know. And this is a, uh, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 16. And it calls to all, both small and great, rich or poor, free or bond, to receive a M A R K in their R I G H T H A N D or in their F O R E H E A D S. Right? Even if you're rich or poor, free or bond, to receive that M A R K, which is that Quran, under this uh, modern day Babylonian economical system, in order to buy yourself. You know? This is uh, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell. Say that he had the M A R K or the name of the B E A S T or the number of his name, right? And this is what's being this is about to be uh, uh, pushed out, you know. This is going to be mandatory in order to buy or sell, even if you're upper class, middle class, or lower class of the economic spectrum that you are in in that type of class, you know. A, in order to buy or sell, you gotta have this technology that they promoting. They're gonna make it mandatory once they fully make it rolled out because it's already here. They just giving it, giving it a, a green light for it to make it mandatory in order for you to uh, buy yourself. And this is what we're about to enter into. You know, that's why we uh, out here now so more than ever telling the children of Israel, which we are the actual descendants of the Israelites. You know, uh, come from out of those ways of this modern day Babylonian system, especially this modern day Babylonian economical system in modern day Egypt spiritually as well too and coming back into the ways that have to the and definitely not taking that technology that they want you to store in your body in order to buy or sell and this is a major prophecy that's about to be fulfilled you know that's why we're out here prophesying about prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war evil and investments and prophesying against these uh, prophesying these prophecies that's about to be fulfilled you know and once again like I mentioned again this is a major prophecy that's about to be fulfilled of this MOTP you know so they're showing you many signs of them pushing up the CHIP in order to buy your sale of this technology of this MARK of this Karagma under this uh, modern day Babylonian economic uh, system you know and that's what they're going to continue to push for of this pushing of the CHIP of this technology that they want you to store in your body even if you're upper class middle class or lower class and it's going to be a time in order to buy your sale and have the technology stored in you know that's why we tell the children of Israel do not conform to those ways, but come back, uh, but come back into the form of the ways of the heavenly Father. Let's follow His ways, the ways of righteousness, following everlasting life, prolonging our lives, and living longer. That's coming back into the ways of the heavenly Father. 
coming back into us being the children of Israel and definitely not taking that technology and definitely not being part of this MOTV for them for them to have you to take in order to continue to be part of this uh, of this uh, uh, Babylonian uh, economical uh, system, you know. So we got to come out of the ways of that mentally and spiritually and definitely not conforming to the ways of this technology that they are pushing for of this MOTV, you know. So we cannot be part of that. We got to try our best in the building to separate from that and come back into the ways of heaven Father, as us being the Israelites of the 12 tribes of Israel from the northern kingdom and to the southern kingdom of the respectable tribes, you know. And this is uh, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let them have understanding. Count the number of the B-E-A-S-T. For it is the number of a man, and his number is S-I-X-3034. Right. Here is wisdom. Let them have understanding. Count the number of the B-E-A-S-T, which is this uh, modern-day Babylonian, uh, the image of this Cesare Borgia, this false image. Worship in this uh, B-E-A-S-T image of that false image of Cesare Borgia. And this uh, image of this uh, B-E-A-S-T of this modern day Babylonian uh, system as well too on top of that, you know. So we got to come out of the ways of that and coming back into the ways of the Heavenly Father, especially us Israelites, you know. So this is very most important to not taking that C-H-I-P that they try to make mandatory and make it roll out, give it a, uh, give it a uh, green light, you know, for all the uh, people on the planet Earth. Because it's, it's going to be fully revealed throughout the whole planet Earth. And this is uh, very important, you know, for the Israelites to not take that and be not part of that. You know, we got to mentally and spiritually come out of the ways of Babylon. This modern-day Babylonian system come out of the ways of it. They come out of the ways of this modern-day Egypt and not have an full trust in this modern-day Babylonian system and this modern-day spiritually Egypt as well, too. So we got to come back into the ways of the Heavenly Father. We got to have our faith and love and trust in Him because He's going to make a way for us in these latter days, you know. And this is a major prophecy that's about to be fulfilled in order to buy your sale, they're pushing for this MOTV of this technology that they want you to store in your body, which is the upper part of your body and the bottom part of your body. Number eight again, this is uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom, let them have understanding. Count the number of the B E A S T, for it is the number of a man, and his number is S I X 300, 34, and S I X. Now, I'm going to switch up the spirit and get into the uh, Matthews, the 24th chapter. And this is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 1. And Hamashiach went out and depart from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to shew the buildings of the temple. Matthew 24, and verse 2, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. And Hamashiach say unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left one stone upon another, and there shall not be thrown down. This is uh, Matthew 24, and verse 3. It says, uh, and as he sat uh, uh, upon the Mount of the Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Right, just like uh, the disciples replied to Yahweh Shai, it says, When shall be these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Which we see it taking place in modern day times as well, too, and especially ancient times, you know, because there, like the scripture says, there's no new thing under the sun. And that's Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9, you know. And I'm read again. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, then the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Yahweh Shai replied to the disciples, and he said, Matthew 24, and verse 4, And Hamashiach answered and say unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Right, we're taking heed to that uh, in modern day times as well, too. Just like the, uh, just like the Yahweh Shai replied to the disciples, said take heed that no man deceive you and we're taking heed to that still to this day as well too just like our great forefathers of the disciples of Yahweh Shai of our Lord and our Savior during their times you know and the heavenly fathers on begot son Yahweh Shai said hey take heed that no man deceive you hey we're taking heed to that in modern day times as well too as generations have been passed on that you know and this is uh Matthew 24 and verse 5 for many shall come in my name saying I am Hamashiach and shall deceive many Right, that's going to increase in the latter days. Many should come in uh, the name of Hamashiach and shall deceive many. You know, they're going to come in the spirit of Hamashiach, you know, that they've been sent to be the messenger of Hamashiach, you know. So 
that's going to increase in these latter days. So we got to take heed to these things. So this is very important, you know. So we got to take, just like the disciples took heed to the words of Yahweh of Israel, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Well, mostly uh, our Lord and our Savior Yahweh Shai meant to say Salak. So we got to take heed to that, you know, just like the disciples took heed to the words of Yahweh Shai. And we got to take heed to that as well, too, in these modern day times. It says, uh, let no man see you. And there shall many uh, come in, in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. So as us being the children of Israel, as being the servants and prophets and representations of our Lord and our Savior, Yahabashiach, Hamashiach, you know, hey, we got to uh, make sure to continue to take heed to that. Like uh, our Lord and our Savior, Hamashiach said, hey, take heed that no man deceive you. And there shall be coming in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. So we got to continue to have a spiritual eye and I'll continue to uh, have a, a, a spirit, spiritual discernment of that, you know, now so more than ever, because that's going to increase in a lot of days. That's why we're out here bidding Israel back into marriage to uh, turn from those ways of uh, false doctrines and false teachings that we've been indoctrinated in for a very long time. So it's important for us to come out of those things, just like we have came out of those things. Now we are into the truth and the true gospels and the teachings of Yahweh of Israel, of Hashem, Yahweh Shach, you know. So we got to come back to uh, of us being the Israelites, the actual descendants of the Israelites, you know. It's like the ancient times because the Israelites were saying dark skinned, complected people, and still to this day, even though we've been scattered among all the nations, you know, um, among all the nations, and we've been scattered. Just like the scripture says, uh, Hosea 1 and 10, Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which is us, you know. So it's important for us Israelites especially in these latter days, to come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father, you know, and take heed to the words of the Holy Scriptures and from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, and through His service and prophets in the latter days as well, too. That's why we're out here on the highways and edges, bidding Israel to the marriage, uh, waking them up in the latter days, that they are telling them that they are the children of Israel and what's taking place in the world today, and telling them to come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father just like we're doing, you know, you know, uh, slowly but surely, continuously, still to this day, you know, bid them back into the marriage and continue to make our calling election sure, you know, fishing for the elect, you know, the one third remnant, Lord willing, that we be part of, you know. So this is uh, where this is what we are out here doing, you know. But definitely back to that Matthew 24, verse 4 and through verse 5, you know, hey, like the Havasha said, take heed that no man deceive you. And, should, and there shall be come in my name saying, they are Hamashiach and shall deceive men. So that's going to increase in these latter days. So we got to continue to uh, have a spiritual eye and uh, increasing the sermon of that in the latter days. You know, that's what we're out here telling the children of Israel to come out of those ways and coming back into the ways of the Heavenly Father. Because we've been, we've been indoctrinated a very long time of this modern day Babylonian system, you know, of the uh, evilness and wickedness and unrighteousness, unrighteous decrees of these uh, unrighteous uh, false. Uh, doctrines, you know, philosophies, all matter of different doctrines to win, you know, rather than coming back into the knowledge of Yahweh Hashem and Shaq through these holy scriptures. Like scripture says, uh, Revelations 1 and 3, blessed he that read it, and through the precepts I get understanding, you know, a hey, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. Hey, we got to come back into the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the holy scriptures and from our uh, uh, heavenly father, Yahweh of Israel, and that's coming back into what we actually really are as men of Israel, you know. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 5. For many shall come in my name, say, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must first come to pass, but the end is not yet. So it's going to continue to increase. It might die down a little bit. Tensions might calm down a little bit, but it's going to escalate right back up. And that's what we've been seeing throughout this whole planet Earth. You know, for many, many, uh, for a very long time, and still to this day, you know, that's why we see the uh, wars and wars and wars heating up, escalation between the different nations and different kingdoms, seditions, uprisings, up wars on people in the world, the love of many are waxing cold. So uh, all this is going to continue to increase, right along with uh, one nation rising up against another nation, one nation of armies rising up against another nations of armies, one nation of kingdoms rising up against another kingdom. One kingdom of armies rising up against another uh, kingdom of armies. Hey, we're going to continue to see that increase. Hey, these are signs of uh, Matthew 24, verse 6 mention of these increasing of these uh, wars and rumors of wars. So it's only going to continue to increase, you know, because we are in those times of the signs of the times that we are in. 
that's why we are measuring the time diligently in itself for them. Had that spiritual discernment continuously, you know, Lord willing that the Heavenly Father will continue to have us as spiritual discernment, you know, continue to be on our watch, that he has made us watchmen unto the house of Israel, sound the alarm, blowing the trumpet, you know. May your how Bashim Yashai continue to have that spirit in us, you know, Lord willing, you know, continuously. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 7. It says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Right, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And that's what we see in, taking place in the world today. So it's only going to continue to increase. Like I mentioned again, even though it might, tensions might escalate down, it might cool down, it might calm a little bit, but it's going to escalate right back up, which we are seeing right now as we speak. You know, even though it's a balance, a balance scale, you know, tensions going up, tensions going down. So it's like a balance scale, so it's only going to continue to increase. Like I mentioned again, nations rising up against one another, different kingdoms rising up against one another, and that's leading to the categories of the nuclear escalations and tensions that we are seeing taking place over there in the Middle East and throughout the whole world, you know. So we're going to continue to see these increase, even though it's a continuing balance scale, but we're going to continue to see that increase of nations rising up against one another, and that's going to definitely lead into the categories of nuclear escalations and tensions. That's why we're seeing uh, uh, military finance speak. Uh, these nations financing their military spending has been at an all-time high, you know, ever since World War II. And we've seen uh, increasing signs of that. And we've been seeing military exercise drills up at an all-time high in the year 2023, in previous years, but as of most of recently as well, too. So we're going to continue to see that increase, you know. So nuclear, nuclear, uh, nuclear uh, spending nuclear uh, upgradable from these nations and they've been financing their uh, money in their military so all that's going to continue to increase nuclear escalations and tensions rising up between the different nations that we are seeing around the world just like the russia ukraine situation what's going on over there uh gaza versus uh you know gaza and hamas and the resistance of the palestinians versus the israeli defense force so those tensions are only going to continue to escalate and we have a multi-front war over there in that area over over there in the Middle East, throughout Syria, throughout Lebanon, throughout the Gaza Strip, throughout the West Bank, throughout Tel Aviv, throughout Jerusalem, throughout that whole area. So these are uh, nations rising up uh, against one another, you know, proxy wars, wars and promotions of wars. So all these signs is going to continue to increase that we are seeing taking place in the world today. That's why we're out here prophesying about uh, prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and a pestilence. Just like the prophets of old did in Jeremiah 28 and 8, and we're going to see that continue increasing in these modern day times. Prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and a pestilence. So it's only going to continue to increase, you know, because we are in those times of uh, speaking of uh, prophecies, you know. And these increasing biblical signs that we're prophesying about, it's only going to continue to increase, you know. I'm going to read it again. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Right. And that's what we are seeing. Earthquakes in diverse places. Just like those multiple earthquakes that took place over there in uh, west, western Afghanistan. And they felt the aftershock of multiple aftershock earthquakes of that as well, too. Uh, double, uh, I would say double magnitude earthquakes of a 6.3 couple of days later another double magnitude of a 6.3 earthquake multiple days later after shocks of multiple magnitudes of earthquakes so that shows you that we're seeing these increasing of these earthquakes in diverse places the famines the pestilence the plagues nation against nation kingdom against kingdom so all this is going to continue to increase in these latter days you know and this is what we are out here promising about prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and a pestilence. So the wars and evils is only going to continue to increase, you know. And this is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 8. It says, all these are the beginning of sorrows, right? So these biblical signs that we are seeing that's taking place, the wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, the weather conditions, and many other categories that lead into these uh, biblical signs. So it's only going to continue to increase because these are the uh, beginning of sorrows. Just like I read in Matthew 24, verse 8, chapter 4. This is, uh, I mean, Matthew 24, the 8th verse. I meant to say Salah. And I'm going to read it again for edification's sake. 
this is the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 8 and all these are the beginning of sorrows right so these are the uh, beginning stages of beginning of sorrow that we're seeing taking place in the world today increasing biblical signs major events global events and uh, biblical signs increasingly and soon to come these prophecies that's about to be fulfilled as well too you know just like prophecies uh, came to pass in the ancient times and we're going to see that transpire in uh, modern day times as well too and that's a prime example of second uh, Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1 that's why we are measuring the time biblically in itself you know? <clears throat> and this is the book of uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 9 it says then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and they shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake just like that took place in ancient times we're going to see that transpire into modern day times as well too just like the scripture says uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9 there's no new thing under the sun this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 10 and then shall many be offended and they shall betray one another and they shall hate one another and that's going to increase in the latter days as well too that's why uh, Matthew 24 and verse 12 and because iniquity shall abound, the other many shall wax cold. A lawlessness is going to uh, continue to ramp up in the last days. And, we'll, and that's what we're seeing in the world today. So it's only going to continue to increase. You know, people should betray one another, hate one another. You know, and that's going to increase. A love of many shall wax cold. The spirit is created for vengeance, which is that's in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 39, verse 28, which is the book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 28 of the Apocryphal books so of the Holy Scriptures. Of that Ecclesiastes chapter 39, verse 28, there's going to be spirits that are created for vengeance. Hey, and the love of many shall wax cold. Hey, 2 Timothy 3 and 1, also in the latter days, perilous times shall come. So, you know, all this is going to pertain to increase. Just like it says in Matthew 24, verse 8, all these are increasing of the beginning of sorrows. You know, and this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 10. And then it says, uh, Matthew 24, verse 10, and it reads to the Holy Scriptures. It says, and then shall many be offended, and they shall betray one another, and they shall hate one another. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Right, that's going to increase as well, too. Just like uh, just like we was getting to Matthew 24 and verse 4 and through verse 5. It says, take heed that no man deceive you. So it's important for us as well as to come back into the ways of the Heavenly Father, you know, and have that spiritual discernment and have that spiritual eye and not continue to be indoctrinated of these uh, false doctrines that we've been following for a very long time, you know. We've been indoctrinated of these false idols, false doctrines, false homosciates. You know, we got to turn away from that and come back into the, the real teachings and the real sound doctrine of the Holy Scriptures, you know. You know, learn the things that we have uh, learned, you know, which is from our elders and apostles, you know, and still to this day, you know. So we got to take heed to the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahshak through the Holy Scriptures. Revelations 1 and 3, blessed he that read it. You know, hear the words of these prophets that were books are written because the times are at hand. So we are uh, in these times. Hey, Isaiah 55 and verse 6, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is there. So it's important for the Israelites to turn from the ways of Babylon, turn from the ways of uh, false indoctrination, and coming back into the real sound doctrine of the Holy Scriptures and from uh, Yahweh of Israel, you know, come back to your power, come back to you being an Israelite, you know, because this is uh, very important in the times that we are in, in these modern day times, you know, as we move forward, you know. And this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 11, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right, that's what we're seeing taking place in the world today. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And that's only going to continue to increase. And you look up that word iniquity, that's going to uh, end more grossly unfair behavior. And that's going to continue to increase. And that's leading to uh, lawlessness. The love of many should wax cold. A evil, seducing spirit should wax worse. You know, and that's in the book of Matthew as well, too. So that's only going to continue to increase in these latter days, you know. But continue on, this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So either one of the out, Lord willing, will be those men that uh, continue to endure to the end and continue to uh, endure hardness and good soda for Hamashiach to have a shot. Uh, you know, which is our Lord and our Savior, Hamashiach to have a shot and Yahweh of Israel, you know. Continuing, continuing on the path that we are doing, which is right now, continuing getting in this truth and the continual increasing of wisdom and knowledge and understanding in the South doctrines of Yahweh of Israel with meekness, humbleness, and sincerity in the sight of the Heavenly Father. 
Yahweh of Israel and by Hashem, Yahweh Shah as well too, you know. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 13. I'm going to read it again. It says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So Adewan Rakhazah, with meek, meekness, humbleness, and sincerity, Adewan Rakhazah, that we be those men that endure to the end and continue in the words of Yahweh Shah, you know. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Right, just like it says in Second Ezra chapter nine and verse five, the beginning of the end, the end is being manifested with these increasing of these uh, biblical signs that we see and taking place in the world today. So it's only going to continue to increase, you know. So that's why this gospel of the that's why the gospel of Yahweh Hashemel Shai is being brought out through the four winds of the world, you know. That's why the Heavenly Father is raising up Israel like man in these latter days. The actual true descendants of the Heavenly Father, which is the Israelites, which is us, you know. And I'm read again. It says, uh, Matthew 24 and verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness, and then the end shall come. So we see an increase of signs of that. Just like it says in the book of Daniel, uh, knowledge shall increase, you know. And that's what we are seeing in a lot of days. So we got to make sure we not get tossed to and fro in different winds of doctrine. That's why we have here uh, bidding Israel to the marriage to come out of those ways and not continually, not continuously uh, in these modern day times. It's like in ancient times, now in modern day times, and not get tossed to and fro of different winds of doctrine. But we got to come back into the actual sound doctrine of the Holy Scriptures and coming back into the ways of the Heavenly Father as us being the Israelites, you know. Now, I'm going to get into that uh, Matthew 24 and verse 37. So, we're living in the modern days of uh, Noah. Just like the modern days of Lot, uh, modern days of Lot as well, too, spiritually in uh, modern day times. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 37. It says, But as the days of Noah were, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. And this is the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 38. It says, But as the days they were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 38. Just like it's, since this is uh, the modern days of uh, Noah, people were eating and drinking and giving into marriage. Just like it says in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 2, hey, the Heavenly Father is the only begotten Son, uh, which is Hamashiach and Hamashiach, which is our Lord and our Savior. And he shall come as a thief in the night. That's why the Heavenly Father has uh, keeping us on, the, on our watch. You know, we're watching out for these signs, and these increasing signs that the Heavenly Father is showing us as us Israelites. That's why we got to continue to be on our watch. That's why he has made us a watchman unto the house of Israel, our actual descendants of the Israelites, which is us. You know? Because the Israelites, they are a dark-skinned, complected people, you know, from the lighter skin to the darker skin, you know. So that shows you that we're living in the modern days of Noah, spiritually, in modern-day times, you know. Because like scripture says, there should be no new thing under the sun. You know? I'm going to read verse 37 again. For edification's sake, this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 37. It says, But as the days of Noah were, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. And this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 38. It says, But as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and giving into marriage until that, that day that Noah entered the ark. And this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 39. It says, A new not until the flood came. Right, just like First Thessalonians five and uh, First Thessalonians five and two, you know, and Yahweh Shai should come as a thief in the night. That's why we take a heed to the words of Yahweh Hashem and Shai. That's why we continue to be the watchmen of the house of Israel, continue to be watchmen for our Lord and our Savior, you know, and Yahweh of Israel, you know. Uh, Matthew twenty four verse thirty nine, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all the way. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 40, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. This is uh, Matthew 24 and 41. It says, Two women shall be grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken at the other left. And this is the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 42. It says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what... Uh, our your Lord thy come. This is a uh, Matthew twenty four and verse forty three, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, "But know this that if the good man of the house has known what watch the thief will come, and he will have watch 
and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 44. It says, uh, Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man coming. Right, so we got to continue to be on our watch, you know. Matter of fact, I'm bring out that first Thessalonians. Before I bring out, before I bring out that, um, matter of fact, I'm going to just go ahead and bring it out. After I bring out that first Thessalonians, uh, 5 and verse 1 through verse 3, and then I'm going to bring out that uh, Luke 17 and 28 as well, too. Right, so we got to definitely continue to be on our watch, you know. Hey, just like it says, once again, Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17, I have made thee a watchman unto the house, unto the house of Israel. You know, old Jerusalem, you know, because we are a representation of Jerusalem, because we are the actual descendants of Zion, and we are the actual descendants of the Israelites, you know. Um, bring out that uh, first Thessalonians. So, yeah, as us being the children of Israel, as us continue to be in the men of the Lord, and we got to definitely got to continue to be on our watch, you know. So, it's a very important, you know. And this is uh, first Thessalonians. Right, this is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 2. It says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Right, that's why we continue to be on our watch, you know. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3. It says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then something strong shall come upon them. As they travail upon a woman, she'll, uh, she'll, right, upon a woman, she'll, with a child, with child, and they shall not escape. And this is our uh, first, I'm going to continue on, uh, First Thessalonians 5 and 4. It says, But ye brethren, ye are not in darkness, that the day shall overtake you as a, as a thief. It says, First Thessalonians 5 and verse 5, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day and not of the night nor of darkness second first thessalonians 5 and 6 it says therefore let us not sleep as others do right just like i got into that matthews the 24th chapter verse 37 through verse 44 luke 17 and 28 you know hey we got to continuously be on our watch so this is that shows you that uh this is the modern days of noah uh this is the modern days of lot this is the modern days of tower of babylon this is the modern days of Egypt, spiritually in modern day times. Hey, we cannot be sleep and drunken like others do. Be rocked back to sleep of the feds or the cares of this uh, modern day lifestyle and this modern day Babylonian system, you know. So that's why we thank the Heavenly Father for uh, plugging us out of the matrix and not be distracted of the things that's what's going on in this world. And actually keep our main focus was actually really taking place in the world today, you know, with these uh, prophecies of biblical signs that we are seeing Continue to increase in the world, you know. Hey, the water you have, I'll show you how to that, you know. And this is a uh, continue on. This is a uh, first Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 6. It says, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Right, first Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary of the deceiver is a roaring lion walking about seeking who he may devour. Revelation 12 and 12, because the ultimate deceiver have great wrath, and who he have but a short time. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. A couple of faces of the judges thereof. First Maccabees 3 and 48, he paint the likeness of his image. That false image is such a reward, you know, because the ultimate justice, which is the uh, Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, you know, which they are a dark skinned, complected people, you know, not those uh, false uh, images of such a reward here, and those false images that they have portrayed around the world as being the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son. You know, that's, that's false, that's deceit, you know. But I'll continue on. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 7. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they be drunken and drunken in the night. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8. And it reads, it says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet on the hope of salvation. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9. For Yahweh has not appointed us to wrath, but obtain, obtain salvation by our Lord Hamashiach and Habashiach. Yeah, uh, now from the, uh, going to the uh, Luke 17 and uh, Luke 17 and 28. 
And this is the book of Luke, chapter 17, and verse 28. It says, Likewise, also it also in the days of Lot, they did eat, they did drink, they bought, they sold, they plant, they built. So that shows you this is the modern days of our lot, you know. This is uh, Luke 17 and 29. It says, uh, but the same day that Lot went out of uh, S-O-D-O-M, if you know what I mean, and it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And this is uh, Luke 17 and verse 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And this is uh, sec, uh, Luke 17 and 31. It says, In that day he shall be up upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, and let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. It says, uh, Luke 17 and 32. It says, Remember Lot, uh, remembers Lot's, Lot's wife. Right. So, hey, that shows you that we're in the modern days of Lot, you know. So just like Lot's wife, she looked back and she got turned into a pillar of salt and not taking to, take heed to the uh, words of Yahweh Hashem El Shai, you know. Hey, Lot's wife looked back and she got turned into a pillar of salt, you know. So that's why we got to continuously be on, be on on our watch, you know. Hey, sound the alarm, blowing the trumpet as pertains to be a watchman unto the house of Israel. Hey, sound the alarm. You know, that warning that we had got from the Heavenly Father ordered us to come out here on highways and hedges to warn the Israelites of what's taking place right now, what's about to come in the near future. Because we're about to enter into some uh, serious, perilous times, which we are already in right now as we speak. We see an increase in signs of it. Hey, we're going to see an increasing at, a, uh, at an alarming rate, some increasing unprecedented times, you know. So that shows you that as I was bringing out the scriptures of uh, Matthew 24, verse 37 through verse 39, all the way through verse 44 in the book of Luke 17 and 28, all the way into the verse 31. So that shows you that we're living in the modern days of Lot. We're living in the modern days of Noah. We're living in the modern days of Tower of Babel. And we're living in the modern days of this modern day uh, Babylonian uh, system, you know. So we got to come out of the ways of that and come back into the ways of the Heavenly Father. What's well, important for the Israelites, you know, that's that do want to take heed and that do want to inquire of these important things as you see the men of the Lord out here on the highways and hedges wherever we've been scattered at throughout the four winds of the world, you know. So it's important for the Israelites to turn back to the Heavenly Father, draw back near to Him. The more He, the more we draw near to Him, the more He draw near to us, you know. So it's important in these uh, times, you know. This is what we're out here prophesying about a war of evil and the best, it's just like the prophet of old did, prophesy against great countries and great kings, a war of evil Pestilence. And that's what we're doing in modern day times too. Well, too. Sound the sound the alarm, blowing the trumpet, you know, into Zion, you know. Now this is the uh, going to Jeremiah the fifty first, right? The Jeremiah the fifty first chapter, and I'm starting at verse seven. And this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter fifty one and verse seven. It says, "Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken." It's like ancient times. Now you see this in modern day times. Because there's no new thing under the sun. Jeremiah 51 and verse 7. I'm going to read it again. It says, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Right? So the Heavenly Father has uh, put that spirit on these other nations to start to be uh, mad at these, uh, of this modern day Babylonian system of what it promotes. You know, even this in wickedness and unrighteousness and these doctrinations of philosophies and stuff like that and those many different categories systems that we are seeing in this modern day Babylonian uh, system because the nation has been drunken off the ways of this modern day Babylonian system and now we're starting to see the nations are turning away from this modern day Babylonian uh, system of what it promotes of evilness and wickedness and unrighteousness on top of that as well too you know that's why uh, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand just like in ancient times now we're seeing that in modern day times you know this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, and verse 8. It says, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed, just like in ancient times. It says, How for her take bond for her pain, and so she may be healed. So this modern-day Babylonian uh, system, spiritually, in modern-day times, there's no healing for it. We're going to continue to see the increasing signs of this modern-day Babylonian system. It's going to continue to decline now, so more than ever. The more we prophesy against it, the more we see it 
you know, the more we see it uh, on the decline, on the decline now, so more than ever, you know. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 9. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsaken her and let us go, everyone, to our own country. But our judgments reach up into the heavens and is lifted up even to the sky. Right, so we see the increasing downfall of this modern day Babylonian system. And we continue to prophesy against this modern day Babylonian system. So we're going to continue to see the increasing signs of it continue to be on the downfall now, so more than ever. The more we prophesy of it, of this uh, downfall of this modern day Babylonian system, the more we see the Heavenly Father exposing this modern day Babylonian system and against this modern day Babylonian system. And the Heavenly Father's. Uh, put the spirit on these nations to turn against this modern day Babylonian system as well too. So we're gonna to continue to see more increasing signs of it as it comes into full effect right now as we speak. So we're gonna to continue to see the increasing signs of this modern day Babylonian system crumbling right in front of our eyes. We're gonna to continue to see that increase, you know. And this is uh, Revelation chapter uh, 18 and verse one. It says, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was like with his glory. This is uh, Revelation chapter 18 and verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, and is fallen. It has become a habitation of deceivers, and a hole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and H A T E F U L bird. Right? So we see in the signs of this modern day Babylonian system is being exposed to what it is. You know, the sins of Babylon have been reached up into the heavens and have been lifted up into the sky, just like in ancient times. We see that transpire into modern day times because this is a modern day Babylonian system spiritually in modern day times, you know. So, this is modern day spiritually Babylon of uh, this uh, system that it has highly influenced throughout the whole planet Earth. And Job 9 and 24, the earth is given to the hands of Wicked, the prime example. In Revelation 12 and 12, the ultimate deceiver should come down with great wrath. But it should come. He should come with a great wrath because we have a short time to rule. You know, because the wicked is bare rule right now of this modern day uh, evil and wicked and unrighteous modern day Babylonian uh, system. And the Heavenly Father is going to fully tear down this modern day Babylonian system. And He's doing it through us as us being His servants and prophets, breaking out the words and prophesying against this modern day Babylonian system. And the Heavenly Father continues to be now so more than ever pushing forth more and more and more. For the nations to go against this modern day Babylonian system. And he put the spirit on us now so more than ever to prophesy against this modern day Babylonian system. And the Heavenly Father is going to continually to go against this modern day Babylonian uh, system as well, too. You know? This is uh, Revelation chapter 18 and verse 3. It says, For all the nations have drunk up a wine of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundances of her delicacies. Right? Buying and selling, you know, through economics, you know, through economics and currency in this uh, modern day system, just like the ancient times. And we're seeing that taking place in modern day times. So, this modern day Babylonian system is being exposed to what it is. Uh, these unrighteous degrees, you know, even this wickedness that they've been, that's been portrayed around the whole world, the highly influenced, and the nations have committed fornication with her, you know, and the kings of the earth, that's a uh, that's that the, the kings of this earth that uh, rule their kingdoms, they have committed fornication right along with her, and still to this day, through the abundances of her delicacies that will wax rich, you know. And we're going to continue to see increase in signs of that until the Heavenly Father fully tear down this modern day Babylonian system. And he's going to continue to expose this system. And we're going to continue to prophesy against this system. And the nations are going to continue to go against this modern day system as well, too, because they've been. Drunk in all the ways of Babylon, they have committed fornication right along with her through the abundances of her delicacies. They will wax rich, you know. So, we're definitely going to continue to see the increase in signs of this modern day Babylonian system. It's going to continue to crumble now, so more than ever, you know. As the more we continue to prophesy, the more we see uh, it's coming into full effect right now as we speak, you know. A modern day Babylon is falling. This modern day Babylonian uh, system is falling, it's falling. And it's going to continue to see increase in signs of that, you know. <clears throat> now I'm going to switch up the spirit and get into the uh, first John 2 and 15 so it's important for the Israelites to come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father and this is uh, first John 2 and 15 it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man loves the world the love of the Father is not in him right so it's important for the Israelites to come back 
to the ways of the Heavenly Father and not 100% fully conforming to the ways of this world, but coming back to the ways of the Heavenly Father. And that's the wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You know, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, this is the whole duty of man, fear your heart and keep his commandments. So this is important for the Israelite to come back up with who he really is as being the uh, 12 tribes of Israel from the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom of the respective uh, tribes of Israel and coming back to being Yashar Allah is Prince of Power come back to being the sons of the Most High so that's important so we got to come out of the ways of this world like scripture says the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the sight of the heavenly God so that shows you that of first John 2 and 15 you know we cannot love the ways of this world 100% even though we are of the world but not of it but mentally and spiritually we got to come back to the ways of the heavenly Father and turn from our evil and wicked ways of what this world hopes just like it for us to conform to just like it says in uh, Isaiah 29 and verse 16, surely your days is turned upside down as an esteem as this pot is played. You know, so we got to come back to the ways that's right side up, not upside down. So we got to come back to the ways of the heavenly Father you know, as us being the Israelites, you know. And I'm reading again, just uh, 1 John 2 and 15. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we got to come back to the ways of loving the heavenly Father not 100% loving the ways of this world because we love in the heavenly father and his own begotten son loving both of them and then loving the world 100% at the same time it doesn't work that way you know because like the scripture says uh, James 1 and 8 a double minded man is, a, is unstable in all his ways so we want to uh, flip that and turn from that from that double mindedness and coming back to having a stable mind and coming back into the mind uh, mindset of stable righteousness that's coming back into the ways of the heavenly father. So that's important for the Israelite man. That's why we are out here on the highways. And, that's why we are out here on the highways and hedges, bidding Israel to the marriage to turn from our evil and wicked ways and come out of the ways of this modern day Babylonian system that we highly influence uh, the feds and the cares of this modern day lifestyle that they promote evilness and wickedness. We got to come out of those ways because we've been uh, glorifying those ways and continually conforming to those ways and continually and being indoctrinated in those evil and wicked ways for a very long time and still to this day and we got to come back to the heavenly father draw back near to him Isaiah 55 and 6 seek ye the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is here now for the bring out that uh, Romans 12 and 2 and this is the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 and it reads through the Holy Scriptures it says and be not conformed to this world but ye transform it by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect in the will of Yahweh. Right, Yahweh of Israel, which is God, which is Yahweh, that's his true name, you know. So it's important for us Israelites, especially Israelite man, to turn from our evil and wicked ways and come back to the ways of righteousness and not 100% fully conforming to the ways of this world, but being renewed, being renewed in our mind. You know, escape all the doctrinations and the false doctrines and the false denominations come out of those ways and coming back into the ways of uh, Yahweh of Israel. And, and that's not being conforming to this world no more. That's being renewed in our mind and coming back into the ways of the heavenly Father. That's the right path to choose, you know. Choose that straight path, that narrow path, you know, choose that way. Rather than trusting the ways of this uh, modern day Babylonian system, we got to come back into the ways of the heavenly Father, you know, as us being the Israelites, you know. And this is the book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world, but ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect in the will of your house. Right? So that's very important in the times that we're living in. Hey, Isaiah 33 and 6, uh, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. You know? Isaiah 55 and 6, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Hey, Romans 13 and 11, but now it's high time to break out of sleep. So it's important for the Israelites, now it's high time to break out of sleep come out of the ways of Babylon mentally and spiritually and coming back to the ways of Heavenly Father as us being the children of Israel. Now for the bring out that Isaiah 33 and verse 6 since I mentioned it. And it's the book of Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6 and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation and the fear of the Lord's stretch. All right, because you look up the word stability that's, that's going into having a sound mind and stable mind. You know, steadiness, firmness, you know, hey, we got to have that sound, stable mind in the times that we are about to approach in our everyday walk of life, in the times that we are currently in, in the times that we are about to approach. 
that's why we are uh, bidding Israel back into the marriage of the ways of the Heavenly Father. We come back into the righteous path and the righteous ways of the Heavenly Father. So wisdom and knowledge and understanding should be the stability of thy times, you know. Come back while you've been the Israelites. Come back to the ways of righteousness in the sight of the Heavenly Father. And that's the right path to choose. Rather than continuing to follow the path of evilness and wickedness. And the Heavenly Father wants us to come out of this evilness and wickedness. And he wants us to return back to him, you know. Because it's very important, you know. Especially in the times that we're about to enter into. And we're about to enter into some uh, serious, perilous, unprecedented times like we never witnessed before, you know. So, just like I brought out there, Romans 13 and 11, I mentioned that. I'm going to bring that out as well, too. And I'm going to read it again. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 33 and verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. And the spirit of salvation. Right to continue building up the spirit of salvation. And the fear of the Lord is the treasure. And Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Because this is the whole duty of man. Fear your habit and keep his commandments. And that's definitely coming back to the ways of you being the Israel. Turn from our ways of Babylon and coming back into the ways of the Heavenly Father, the Yahweh of Israel, as us being the uh, Israel, you know. And this is the book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 11. How far you can go? And this is the book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 11. And that now in the time that now is high time to wake out of for now is our salvation there to the believe, right? So it's high time to wake out of sleep, cheers of Israel, of the respectable 12 tribes of Israel, men and women, hey, especially the Israelite man. Hey, now it's that time to high time to wake out of sleep. And the Heavenly Father say, Now it's that time to high time to wake out of sleep. Turn from your evil and wicked ways, coming back into the ways of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh of Israel. Come back to you being Yahshua Allah. He is the Prince of God. Even whether they hear it from here, you know, we're going to continue to be out here on the highways and hedges. As long as the Heavenly Father continues to put that spirit on us. So we're going to continue to mention it, even if we sound like a broken record player, even if we sound repetitive, and we're going to continue to mention this, you know, because <clears throat> the Heavenly Father ordered us to come out here to tell the children of this world, you know, hey, now's that time, the high time to break out of sleep. That's why the Heavenly Father has made us a watchman unto the house of Israel, warning the Israelites, that warning we got from the Heavenly Father ordered us to come out here to warn the Israelites, hey, now's that time, the high time to break out of sleep. Turn from your evil and wicked ways, which we are continually doing this work too. That's why we uh, you know, uh, continue to increase and grow the process of rehearsing the righteous acts <clears throat> and continue to make our calling election short to the best of our ability. You know? That's why we are here telling the Israelites it's important for you to come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father, return from your evil and wicked ways, and coming back to the ways of righteousness. You know? Even though the Heavenly Father is going to save one third remnant of his people, you know? so Lord will it be of that number? That's why we are out here pushing for the elect men. Yahshua Ali is the Prince of Power. Tell the Israelite man, turn from your evil and wicked ways, come back into the ways of the Heavenly Father. Seek him now so more than ever. Come back of you being an Israelite. You know, so that's the most important, you know, especially in the times that we are in, in the times that we're about to approach. You know. And I'm going to read it again. This is uh, Romans 13 and 11. And that knowing the time, that now is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation there than we believe. Right, so it's not, now it's high time to wake out of sleep, the children of Israel, you know. And this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 6, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Right, we got to seek the Lord now so more than ever, especially in the times that we are in. We're about to enter into some uh, serious, uh, unprecedented times like never before. A Jeremiah 30 and 7, that's a prime example. Matthew 24 and 21, prime example. And many other scriptures is that as well too. Second Ezra uh, sixteen through verse seven through verse seventy three. A uh, second Ezra the fifteenth chapter, you know. Uh, second Ezra eight and verse fifty. And these are prime examples. It's going to continue to increase in these latter days. You know? Make sure the thing all right. <coughs> continue on. This is, uh, yeah, this is the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 7. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, to our God, Yahweh. And for he will abundantly prove it. Right, once we turn from our evil and wicked ways, and coming back into the ways of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh of Israel, once we acknowledge those things that we've been doing wrong in the sight of the Heavenly Father for a very long time, and still to this day, you know, 
glorifying evilness and wickedness and still to this day, once we turn away from those things, that we uh, acknowledge that we've been doing wrong in the sight of Yahweh of Israel, you know. Once we uh, acknowledge that and coming back to the ways of us being the Israelites, coming back to the ways of righteousness, and once the Heavenly Father sees that, hey, I was going to prophesy, may Yahweh of Israel abundantly prove us from our evilness and wickedness once we turn back to him, you know. This is uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And this is the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7 and verse 14, and it reads to the Holy Scriptures. It says, uh, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will hear their land. Right? Once we turn back and draw back near to the Heavenly Father and pray and seek his face now so more than ever and turn from our evil and wicked ways and coming back to the ways of righteousness. Right? And the Heavenly Father is going to restore the nation of Israel, the actual descendants of Israel, because the time of the Gentiles is already uh, is going to be fulfilled very soon. So we see at times uh, increase the signs of that because they have the five the Lord's land. So those are not the actual people over there in the land. Because you know? we are the actual descendants of the Israelites, you know? not those people over there claiming to be us. You know, Like it says in Zechariah 9 and 6, a uh, small hat shall be boiled in Ashdod. And that's what we're seeing over there in modern day times. You know? Because those are not the actual, those Israelis, those small hats. You know, those are uh, not the people of the Heavenly Father. We are the people of the Heavenly Father. Because the scripture says we're just going to be scattered throughout the four, four winds of the globe, you know, for our evilness and for our disobedience, for not continually following the ways of the Heavenly Father and not continuing to the ways of righteousness and not being that holy part set apart people like we once was. But because of our disobedience, we have kindled uh, anger and fire in the Lord. That's why he has uh, scattered us amongst all the nations, you know. Hosea 1 and 2, I mean, Hosea 1 and 10, Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Because of our disobedience and our evilness and our transgressions and our sins that we've been building up continuously in the sight of the Heavenly Father still to this day. You know, so that shows you these uh, small hatters or those Israelis, they don't fit the curses, you know, because they, uh, they uh, are oppressing other nations ruling over other nations and stuff like that, you know. So that shows you that those over there over there in the people over there in the land of Israel, over there in Jerusalem, that shows you that those are not the people of the Heavenly Father. You know? So that that been a mis huge conception throughout the whole planet Earth. Now we're starting to see a lot of people waking up to that fact, you know. Even though they still think those are the Heavenly Father's people, but at the same time, now we now the people starting to see the uh, deceitfulness, the lying, the uh, deceitfulness that's being portrayed on the whole planet Earth, you know. But you know, that's just a sad note. That's another topic at hand. But I'm um, gonna read uh, Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. So it's important for the Israelites to come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father, as us being the sons and daughters of the Most High, the chosen, the actual chosen people of the Most High, which is us, the Israelites. And we gotta come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father, turn from our evilness and wickedness in his sight that we've been doing for a very long time, you know? So this is important, especially the times that we are in and the times that we are about to enter into, you know? Romans 13 11, like I mentioned again, hey, now it's high time to wake out of sleep, the children of Israel, which is us. That's why we are out here on the highways and edges to warn and tell the Israelites, you know? Second, uh, this is the book of Second Chronicles 7 and 14. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, should humble themselves and pre and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Right, so our land is not being healed right now. Even though Galatians 4.26, uh, Jerusalem is a people before us a place because we are a representation of Jerusalem. And we are a representation of uh, Zion to Zion, you know, which is us, you know. So it's important for the Israelites to uh, turn back to the heavenly God, you know, and turn from our evil and wicked ways, you know. Now, for the, uh, get into the uh, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. As we continue to see these uh, wars and rumors of war seeding up around the world, especially with the Russian Ukraine situation that's taking place over there in the Middle East. So it's only going to continue to increase, you know. It's like it says in Luke 21 and verse 9 uh, wars and commotions. And that's what we're seeing around the world increasing proxy wars, seditions, uprisings, uprisings of people in the world, you know. Uh, 
lot of increasing of these wars and commotion that's taking place in the world today. Just like Jeremiah 28 and 8, and the prophets of old prophesied against great countries and great kings, both war, evil, and pestilence. And that's what we're seeing in modern day times. And this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38 and verse 1. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 2. It says, Son of man, because we are the actual descendants of the Heavenly Father. We are the sons of the Heavenly Father. That's why it says, Son of man, you know, it's us. It says, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, just like that took place in ancient times. Now you see that transpired into modern day times. Because we are this, we are the actual descendants of the Heavenly Father. So that's why the uh, Heavenly Father have us to prophesy against God and let make God just like the prophets of old did, you know. I'm gonna start at verse one again. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 2. It says, Son of man, set thy face against God and the land of Magog, chief prince. Hello. 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 How you doing? Continue uh, known. This is a phone advertisement. Phone call. I'm gonna continue known. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter thirty-eight and verse one. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Ezekiel thirty-eight and two. Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal prophesy against him. And that's what we're doing, prophesying against Gog and the land of Magog, which is the modern day Russians. But at the same time, they have the fathers uh, continuously putting that spirit of their warlike spirit into these uh, Russians, just like in ancient times. Now we're seeing that transpire into modern day times. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 3. And thus saith the Lord, Yahweh of Israel, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 4. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth in all thy army, horse and horse for thee. And all of them pull for all sorts of armor, and even a great company of buckles and shields. And all of them handle swords, just like that took place in ancient times. And we're going to see that transpire into modern day times. Because like the scripture says, there's no new thing under the sun. And that's Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. Even though I referenced that scripture many times, you know. <clears throat> Book 10, no. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 5. Persia, which is the modern day Iranians. Ethiopia, which is the Cushites. Libya, the Ishmaelites. With all of them with shield and him. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 6. It says Gomer, which is the modern day Turks. That's why we see it over there and throughout Iraq and Syria. You see in the uh, Turkish armies uh, doing that military operation over there. They've been doing that quite some while over there in Syria and throughout Iraq. Going against the uh, Kurdistan armies over there, you know. That's why we're seeing a lot of increasing uh, escalations over there in the Middle East. You know, that's why Russia is going to be a guardian to these nations over there, especially of uh, Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, and uh, Turkey as well too. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter thirty-eight, verse six. Gomer, which is the modern-day Turkish army, and all his bands, the House of Tokenor of the North Quarters, and all his bands and many people with me. Just like in ancient times, we're seeing this transpire into modern-day times. Because like it says again, there's no new thing under the sun. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 7. It says, Be thou, it says, Be thou prepared and prepare. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself and all thy companies that are assembled unto thee. Be thou a guard unto them. Right? So Russia is definitely going to continuously and increasingly be a guard unto these nations. And that's what we are seeing. Hey, Russia is being a guard unto these African nations. I mean, African nations. You know, over there in Ethiopia, the Kushites and the African nations over there, you know, Rome, which is the modern day Turks, the Persians, which is Iranian, you know, even though Turkey, they playing both sides of the fence, <laughs> who they going to choose, you know, who side they going to be with. At first, they uh, choosing the side of peace and then they choose the side of war, you know, so they're going to either way, they're going to have to choose the side. But hey, the Heavenly Father is setting all this up. As we get it closer and closer to the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which is the end of Joel, the third chapter, you know, and this is a future prophecy of uh, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, verse 1, all the way down to verse 7, you know. So with that, uh, hopefully this uh, lesson is uh, edifying out here on the highways and hedges. 
on Monday, October 16th, 2023 at 254 p.m. So hopefully you are edified in the Heavenly Father's true name is uh, Yahweh of Israel and His only begotten Son, Bahashem, in the name of Mashiach and Habashach. Those are their true names in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, the Lashwan and the Holy Tongue. You know, so with that, hopefully this uh, lesson was edifying on this uh, Monday afternoon at 2.54 p.m., Monday, October the 16th, 2023. So hopefully you were edifying. So with that, hopefully this uh, lesson was edifying, like I mentioned again, Salakia. So with that, I would like to give all praises, glory, and honor to to Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Akarkadash, Shalom to the uh, elders for preaching the word, truth and sincerity, in the names of Yahweh, Ba Hashem, El Shai, Ba Hashem, Akarkadash, and I say Shalom to the elders, Yahweh for sure. Shalom to the uh, Akiyah, staff of the four points of glory, preaching the word, truth and sincerity, in the names of Yahweh, Ba Hashem, El Shai, Ba Hashem, Akarkadash, and I say Shalom to the Akiyah, Ba Akwaf as well too. And until next time, I will say Shalom, Elders, Ba Akiyah, Ba Akwaf. Until next time, I will say Shalom.